Hi everybody, thank you very much for joining us. I am just uh, getting us set up to live stream on Facebook, so I'll get the webinar started very soon. But thanks for joining us in Zoom. We'll be with you very shortly. So, I think we are actually, we're live now. <laughs> so hi everybody, and thanks for joining us for today's webinar in Professional Beauty's daily webinar series. Um, today's webinar is Pregnancy Waxing 101, top tips for waxing clients pre and post uh, pregnancy. So I'm joined today by Marta Zajowska. I'm pretty sure I've said that right, but I'll let Marta introduce herself in a second. Um, Marta is the Director and Chief Executive of Salon Waxing Specialist. Um, and it's, she also runs a training academy, um, training people in all sorts of waxing, but is a particular expert in pre and post pregnancy waxing. So has tons to say. So um, today's webinar, I need to mention, is sponsored by Lycon Precision, Precision Waxing. Uh, Lycon has a special offer for new accounts at the moment. Their starter kits, which include training and full professional treatment room setup, are discounted at the moment until September. So they now start from just £640, including VAT. So I'll be pasting a little link to their website in the chat box, both here in Zoom and over on Facebook in just a second, so that you can find out a bit more about them and their offer there. Um, so yeah, as I say, today's webinar is hosted by Marta Zajowska. Hi, Marta. Hello, everybody. <laughs> yes, uh, my name is Marta Zajkowska, so uh, it's a difficult surname and we've done it well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Marta's Director and Chief Executive of Waxing Specialist, as I mentioned. So she has a salon here in London, um, a training academy, and um, yeah, a real pro on this topic. So just before Marta starts with her presentation, um, I just want to let you know we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end of the session. So if you have any questions, um, do type them in as we go along so that we can uh, get to them all at the end. If you're watching in Zoom, you can see there's a little Q&A box um, at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you're watching on Facebook, then just type them in the comments and we'll get them all answered then. But I will pass over to Marta now to get started. Brilliant. Thank you so much for introducing me. Uh, hello guys again and um, thank you for having me. So I'm coming here today to talk about a pregnancy waxing and our industry is involving all the time and you know pregnancy waxing became more and more popular. I think around five years time people started to ask for it and because of clients ask for it why not give it to them professional services. So we have a short time today okay so we'll be dropping the ocean of what I wanted to talk to you about but I'm going to focus today on pregnancy intimate waxing and that's what I've prepared for you for this webinar. So I'm going to share my screen with you Okay, let's see if we can get to my presentation. And in a second, you should be able to see the presentation. Perfect. So the webinar today is called Pregnancy Intimate Wax Formula and is sponsored by Lycon Wax and it has been mentioned before. Uh, right, so let's start from the beginning. Pregnancy Intimate Wax. Before you start to think about pregnancy wax, uh, before like even try to introduce to your salon, there are certain things that you have to look into. And I've listed here on the uh, screen for you uh, and just gonna shortly talk about it. So first of all, safety. You need to make sure that the treatments that you provide are totally safe for your clients. Training, very important. Are you trained and is your staff trained in pregnancy waxing? And client care. So do you know how to look after that client during that um, service, during that treatment? There are very important and very, like three top things that I always say you need to consider before you even think of doing pregnancy waxing at your salon. Now, a lot of people asking, is pregnancy wax safe? And I can reassure you all that there is no evidence that pregnancy wax is unsafe. And we can say with confidence to the client that waxing during pregnancy is safe. However, guys, it's only safe if it's done by professionals, but somebody who is trained, insured, and they know what they're doing, okay? And one of the questions that I always get asked by therapists um, and clients as well 
when to wax. So when it comes to full body waxing, uh, you can wax the pregnant client all the way even, you know, up to the due date, I would say. <laughs> Maybe not day before due date, but you can do it. Uh, you know, you can do facial wax, you just have to be extra careful on the face, you know, and the positioning might be a bit more difficult, but you can pretty much, you know, carry on waxing throughout the whole pregnancy. But when it comes to pregnancy intimate wax, I will stress you a bit and advise <laughs> that we recommend to wax ladies over like 12 weeks and up to 38 weeks of their pregnancy. I only recommend uh, to wax the intimate pregnancy, uh, do the pregnancy wax intimate over 12 weeks. Uh, I would say even like after the first, first scan. And um, due to also um, restrictions, insurance policy restrictions. So you need to check with your provider, with your insurance provider, what do they say about intimate pregnancy waxing? Okay. Now, um, if you do want to know why I restrict that 12 weeks, what's the reason behind it? Okay, a part of the policies. Uh, maybe you can ask later on in the question box and I can tell you more about it. Why I think it's best to kind of go with this, um, you know, with, with this guideline. Okay, so let's talk a bit about benefits of pregnancy intimate wax for the client. First of all, it's great that clients can continue doing the regular waxing. Uh, you know, that they've been doing before the pregnancy. They're also getting prepared for labor and it's avoiding, you know, shaving rushes and cuts from razors if they were like, you know, attempting to do them by themselves. So, you know, ask husbands or friends, um, but also avoiding being shaved by midwife. And I know that the razors that they have in uh, hospitals are not the best, you know, they have short amounts of funds. So you're not going to have the Gillette for sure. Also clients feeling looked after. That's another benefit of doing pregnancy waxing. And I think one of the most important is the confidence boost. It's being ready, being looked after and, and feeling, you know, like yourself really. And um, so these are just a few benefits of of doing intimate pregnancy wax. Okay, now this, what I'm going to tell you now, it's like the key to the success of pregnancy waxing, if you are going to consider offering this for your clients. First of all, you have to choose a low temperature hot wax. And Lycon hot wax is the best in the industry for this type of services. Why? Because Lycon hot wax is only 55 degrees and therefore it's really safe for the skin. Number two, do not even risk with using a strip wax on intimate areas when you're doing pregnancy waxing, because that's just calling for disaster. You don't want to do this to your client. Remember, you need to patch test your client before you do any services. And another very important part of this formula is that you need to communicate with your client. I can't imagine you doing pregnancy wax and clients, for example, being on the phone or reading magazine or waxing in a silence. This isn't possible. Client has to communicate with you because they simply cannot see what, they, you, what you're doing, you know? So there has to be that trust and communication throughout the treatment, what you're doing. So your conversation has to turn into professional and less a kind of private. Uh, and that will guarantee you those few points in here will guarantee you that you will be safe and you won't be risking with your client's skin. Right, so you can see on the screen here, I've prepared for you like a line with very important things. Pregnancy, intimate wax formula. Uh, people asking, what is the difference between a normal intimate wax and pregnancy wax? So if I could give you just a few points for today, I will say to you, right, number one, you need to look at the pregnancy hormones. You need to acknowledge that during the pregnancy, during the three trimesters, there are hormones that are influencing the skin, the hair growth and the body, and also the mood of your client. And you need to take this into consideration. Number two will be skin reactions. So, you know, skin during pregnancy is much more sensitive and will be reacting more. 
So you need to be aware of this and you have to really know everything about melasma. So you are able to advise your client and explain them if they have any concerns. Number three will be client positioning. And this one is the very common question I get asked from therapists. How do I position my client? Well, at the beginning of the pregnancy, it's no brainer. It's kind of the same. But once the client is, you know, their second trimester and they started to grow, number one rule is that you cannot have them flat on the bed. And what I advise is to have them in a 40 degrees position. You can ask them to do the butterfly position for you or just a one side leg. But you have to make sure that you check. Do they have any back pain problems, lower back? Do they have any hips problems? You know, there are very common things that are coming with pregnancy and you need to make sure that the position of your client is comfortable, but also really safe for you to wax. And the last part, aftercare advice. Well, guys, good news. A lot of things that um, clients cannot do because they are pregnant is also what they cannot do because we wax them. <laughs> so it's a bit easy for us. However, you need to speak to your client about products that they apply on the skin. And would like to hear pointed out that you cannot advise them to use any ingrow hair products, okay? Why? Because most of the products, including salicylic acid, which is not advisable to use, mainly guys, those, those products have not been tested on pregnant women and they will never be tested as you can, you know, understand why. So um, you will have to be kind of clear about the aftercare advice to your client. Uh, also, the, the kind of reaction of the skin so they know what to expect when they come home. Hope this is clear. We can always go back to this if you have more questions. And I would like to move on to post-pregnancy plan. You know, pregnancy is something really new to every woman. You know, when they get pregnant, you know, they kind of learning everything about it. And I think pregnancy waxing is the same. Even if somebody was waxing for a long time, you know, this is a new treatment. This is, you know, new, new they have kind of like a different body. And I think it's really important that we just don't wax them during pregnancy and then tell them, you know, bye, I see you whenever. You know how midwives and doctors are looking after women during pregnancy and then they tell them when to come back? I would expect that you do exactly the same for your client. So I wouldn't leave the client just hanging. I will make sure that they know when to come back to you. And you need to explain them this. And this will happen, you know, while they are in the salon and make sure that they book that next appointment after the pregnancy. But you need to know when is okay for them to come back. And here I presented for you three cases. Okay. And this is uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is for intimate waxing. Okay. We're talking just about intimate pregnancy waxing. So if we have a natural birth, generally it's safe to come back after eight weeks. And that includes all type of like bikinis and Hollywood. You know, from many years of my experience, I've noticed that the eight weeks was this kind of time where people had enough of time to recover. Sometimes after giving natural birth, ladies are still bleeding over two or three weeks. It could be even longer. Uh, Eight weeks is the kind of the time where they feel like they're going back to normal and the babies most of the time start to have routines. So eight weeks is kind of good for both, for us and for the client. Now let's talk about C-section, which is a bit of more complicated. So with the C-section, you can ask your clients to come back also, you know, after eight weeks, um, after giving birth. But because we have the scar, we need to take extra care when working near around it of the area uh, in the scar. Now, the, the problem, it's not a problem, the good thing about the scars is that hair don't grow on them. So you don't have to, you will never go over the scar. Uh, if you go around it, you need to warn your client that they might feel what I call like pinching needles feeling. <laughs> Um, because the area can be quite numbed uh, and it's still very sensitive, um, you know, they will, they will have that feeling. And some clients are very okay with it and they will be, yeah, that's fine, you can wax it. If your client is like, you know, looks like 
very scared and, and perhaps in pain, I would not advise that you uh, force it. What you can do, uh, take a tweezer, maybe pluck a bit. If it's still uncomfortable, you will remove this hair next time, okay? Now, tear or episiotomy. Uh, can I just also say the C-section is very common with uh, clients that you will have over 30. So in my salon, I have lots and lots of them. I'm in the areas of the Yummy Mummies in London and we have a lot. So we do deal with a lot of C-sections. So these are very helpful information. Tear and episiotomy, you see, this is a bit of more complicated because I advise that you wait up to six months uh, before you do like a full Hollywood, right? What I mean is you can still do bikini or extended bikini, but I would really not advise that you go for full Hollywood until the scar like completely heals and there's no issues. Okay. You might say, but my client is fine and you know, the, the scar it healed. And I think, okay, you can look at individually. But I tell you from my experience is that I've never had anyone um, after it was due to me uh, that was forcing me to do the full Hollywood. This scar heals a bit longer. There's also a tightness around it and it's very uncomfortable for the client and they're very cautious about, uh, you know, how the underneath looks and how it feels, you know. So we take an extra care. And we only wax when, you know, we both kind of have a green light. So, you know, it's a good time, client is ready. Uh, then we can really perform that first wax after giving birth. Okay. Now I've got a bonus here for you today. And I thought, let me help you out to understand why I believe this whole pregnancy intermittent wax formula is so important and can really boost your, your, your salon's income, your reputation. You know, you can be known for being very good in looking after pregnancy, uh, pregnant clients. But I believe that you need to have a few very good things in place um, that will guarantee you this, this success and client will be recommending you to everyone. First of all, you need to have a separate pregnancy wax consultation. Um, I know most of you will have very good waxing consultations, but I will stress you to invest a bit of time at prepare like bespoke uh, consultation where you ask additional questions about their pregnancy. Okay, is this the first pregnancy? Have they been waxing during the pregnancy? Have, have they had laser before? Uh, have they been waxing during the pregnancy? How many weeks are they pregnant? All these questions uh, that will help you out to de deliver very good service. Second very important part of this formula is pregnancy wax planning. So I've just told you about the planning that is good um, to do that. I will give you another uh, secret insight that in my salon, I have a leaflet. Uh, you might not be able to see here fully, maybe we'll show you later, where I do give a client a plan. So I write down when they do, when I want them to come back uh, and I give it to them. So you don't want to leave the client just to kind of decide it for themselves. So you want to make sure that they feel looked after, they know when they're coming back, and I guarantee you they will stay your loyal client if you provide service like this. Now, another very important part of this formula is pregnancy wax procedure. So I've already mentioned to you at the beginning, you need to have amazing products. You, can, you have to have a, a wax that is low temperature. You need to know the positioning. You need to know contraindications. So you need to know as well when you should not wax pregnant lady, okay? On where, when it's too late to wax or when it's, for example, um, you cannot do the treatments that your client asks, okay? Now, post-pregnancy comeback plan. So I've already mentioned to you before that um, you want the client to know when to come back. And I'm, I'm really very, you can see, passionate about it. Because I feel like this is a very important moment in women's life and a lot of things are changing and, and after they have babies, you know, they feel like left out and, and quite often they don't have time to come and do beauty treatments. And you might say, oh, do they really need waxing straight away after birth? Well, as I told you also about the benefits of waxing is the confidence boost. I think it's really satisfying and good thing to be the part of it and help those ladies to, to be normal again, to feel looked after, to go back to the services that they've been doing before. 
And okay, so I think I gave you here quite enough of information already. Um, I just wanted to also tell you that this is just a drop in the oceans of information about pregnancy wax, okay? Um, I am uh, happy to answer all your questions or if you have, uh, you know, anything you want to ask me, uh, feel free. Uh, I do um, um, would like to invite you to, to look into this more, look into the trainings that are now available, look into the Lycan wax, you know, what are the options for uh, pregnancy waxing. Um, I have to mention that the reason why I choose to do the pregnancy wax as well is that the company that I use, the Lycan wax, gave me really a lot of confidence and trust because they released a written document that says that um, Lycan wax is safe to be used on pregnant skin. So you have this document and you can show it to your clients if they have any concerns. So uh, thank you. Uh, this is my presentation for you guys and I will now be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Marta. That's fantastic. That was a really interesting presentation and I certainly learned a lot there. And I do just need to say, I think it took a few more minutes than we thought, a few more seconds than we thought to get the live stream going on Facebook. So if people missed the very beginning, they missed my introduction to you. So they saw the very start of your presentation, but they might have missed me introducing you. So I just want to repeat um, that this webinar is sponsored by Lycon UK. Um, Marta works with Lycon Waxing, um, but Lycon also has an offer on at the moment for anyone watching, which is a discount on starter kits and I've pasted a little link in the uh, chat box on Facebook so you can find out a bit more there. Fabulous, but yeah, if you have any questions for Marta following that brilliant presentation, do type them in. We've got um, a Q&A box in Zoom that you can type them into or just the chat box in Facebook and we will get some of them answered now. We've had quite a few through already. So um, the first one is when you are doing a consultation with a client, if their pregnancy is deemed high risk medically, would it be safe to proceed? Do you have any thoughts around that? High, is they already telling you that it's a high risk? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, if it comes up in, in your consultation. With yeah. So this doesn't really happen often, to be honest. So clients that are aware of this, uh, that the pregnancy is high risk, they uh, seems not seems not to kind of want to come for treatments like this. Um, but uh, I will be really careful. So the reason why I talk about this first 12 weeks is that once you, if you don't have that policy, once you start to work, what happens quite a lot, you realize how many miscarriages are out there. Uh, many, many women are unfortunately you know, going through this. And as a therapist, you are put in a bit uncomfortable situation because you know, people will come, they say I'm pregnant and you're happy with them and they come again and then, and they not. And we are not really trained to be doctors and sometimes you don't know what to say, it's, it's emotional. And, and I feel like people seem to want to find the reason why this happened to them. And because we are in the area of bikini, you know, technically we cannot make anyone to have miscarriage. But the last thing you want is don't lose mind for that reason. They might question, oh, what if I didn't have that wax? What if I didn't, you know, whatever, didn't go to the gym and stuff. And I found it over the years that whenever we had, we had many, many situations like this, uh, you see, I'm quite confident in speaking to clients about this, um, but my staff, you know, they, they not always are, you know, prepared for this kind of uh, tragedy. So I've decided that it's best to make sure that this pregnancy is safe. You know, first scan, they know they're not bleeding. So if the client comes pregnant and say, I'm bleeding today, you need to send them to A&E <laughs> straight away. Absolutely. Well, exactly. I think it's always about working within your limits and, and knowing and what to look out for. And another question we've had actually is what types of skin reaction are common during pregnancy? Is there anything there that they should, should look out for or be cautious of? Mm -hmm. So when you're waxing somebody who's pregnant, uh, you know, you do the patch test, but generally you don't go with a, such a big patches. You seem to start smaller and you, re you, that's why it's important that the pregnancy treatment is a bit of longer time. It's not the usual time that you have for intimate wax. Longer time and you go a bit slower and you observing the skin and you're looking at how red it is. It can get really, really red immediately you'll be shocked and the labia area can get swollen 
Okay, so you need to watch out for that and just ask the client, how does that feel? Because client might say to you, oh, it doesn't really hurt, but you look at the skin and it looks like, you know, it's, it's really, really red. But it seems to kind of cool down while you do the treatment. I think what you don't want is to kind of rush through it and then suddenly the entire area is like in flames, you know? But likely this doesn't happen when you use a hot wax. If you were risking with a strip wax or really high temperature wax, you will burn the client, it's guaranteed. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Great, thanks for that. And another question we've had over on Facebook is, what is the last week of pregnancy that you wouldn't recommend waxing? I hear so many different things. So I suppose when is the absolute last that you would wax mm -hmm. up? Or would you, how long would you continue? I'll tell you a little story, okay? <laughs> um, before I've done this policy, you know, obviously I've waxed many, many, many women, many women. And then one day I had somebody who came who was quite petite, was regular client, and I, I was waxing her. I was quite surprised that she came because I thought uh, this was uh, quite far in her pregnancy. And while I was waxing her, I realized that she had an iPhone in her hand and she was checking something on the phone. And I was shocked because she was checking her contractions. Okay, so she was having contractions and I suddenly realized that the bumble was going up and going down. So I completely freak out, okay? I thought this is crazy and you know, and I, and I have to say, sometimes people will not think twice and they will be like, oh, I want to be super ready for my labor. And we understand that. But from my experience over the years, it's like women seems to around 39, 40 weeks, they started to feel quite heavy. They have problems with uh, moving even. How, do you, how are you going to get them on the bed? How are they going to hold the position? Okay. Sometimes they can get out of breath. Remember, they are in this position. The bump, it's a squeezing here, that part. So they might faint. You need to be aware of that. So usually, I think that the 38 for me is like the top mark. You, can, you, could, you could push it, but is, is this necessary? Is this comfortable for the client? Is this safe for you? You know, I've had one pregnant client who almost fainted. It was quite hot and, and you know, and it just happened. And I have to react really quickly, you know, water, sugar, mm. air conditioning, you know, but imagine if that happened to one of your staff. Also, what I wanted to say, if I have somebody who comes to the salon for the first time, and I want to be clear about this, and they are 38 weeks pregnant, and I've never waxed them, and they, let's say they've been shaving the entire pregnancy, there is no way I will be doing Hollywood for them. Okay. okay, so you see, you need to look at, that's why the consultation is so important, because you need to look at individually. If I had a lady who was 38 weeks pregnant, but she was waxing during the pregnancy, okay, or she had the laser before, and she just have a fluff, then I don't see any reason why I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. yeah? So it's just very individual. You can't treat every pregnant lady the same. But if you have that safety guidelines over 12 weeks, no more than 38, you are safe. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. And um, that actually relates to another question we've had through, which is for pregnancy waxing, if you are doing Hollywood wax, is it best for your client to lay flat and on their side? Okay, yeah, great good. question. Whoever asked that, thank you very much, because I wanted to talk about this a bit more. Um, so when you have them first, when they come in, you know, when they're just at the beginning of the pregnancy, the position can be pretty much the same way when you do a normal intimate wax. Once they start to get the bump and, and they begin, so that's around like 25, 26 weeks, you know, clients vary, some of them will not have a bump. But the general rule is that they're not supposed to lie down flat. And most of the pregnant ladies will know that, they will tell you that they can't, right? Now, so this will be the front. Um, you, sometimes you need to put the client a bit on the side, even when you do the front, you might have one leg bent, you might have another one, depends on how they mobile. But when it comes to the bump area, this is a tricky one, okay? Because they cannot lie down flat and lift the legs up and they cannot turn around on the bump, yes? So what you need to do is you put them on the side where they have the legs bent, the head is secure with one of the hands and the another hand of them is helping you and lifting the bum cheeks up. And you have to be a bit of, you know, gymnastic yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we do ladies in our job and you wax it that way right? and with the bum area like I stress students be aware of hemorrhoids and you know they can happen during the pregnancy they can be quite um, inflamed I would even say 
I don't advise to wax them like you know directly go around it uh, and I think ladies usually will tell you if they are, don't want to do this area for that reason that happens quite a lot in pregnancy okay no, that's really yeah interesting makes complete sense and another question we've had Ava on Facebook is do you have to have a separate qualification to wax clients during pregnancy mm -hmm. So you see, I would love this to happen, not only for pregnancy, but for waxing. Uh, I am a big advocate for waxing specialists being a separate um, job title, you see, because we can specialize and then we have the right qualifications and then the industry will be, uh, will gain a lot because if we do like a rule that no one can double dip, right? And there's a fine for it, then, mm -hmm. oh my God, you know, clients will be happy. We will be happy. Unfortunately, it's not regulated. So if anyone listening, please, like if we can do something about it, because that would be great. With waxing at the moment, you have your NVQs, right? You then get your insurance, you have your beauty levels, you know, completed, and then you can specialize in waxing. But that's really down to you. So, you know, my pregnancy course is accredited, but it doesn't give you like, I would say an extra, it gives you an extra qualifications, but you don't really need it if you go to the salon. I think you can take, it's, it's a good practice to have because you show your employer that, um, yeah, you want to be great and you want to learn new things in the industry. And hopefully mm -hmm. the pregnancy wax and, and waxing, full waxing, we will have something like this coming. Absolutely. And it's reassuring, isn't it? I think for clients as well to know that you're specially trained. I think people particularly are so nervous around that time that they want to, to look for someone that does have that extra little bit of training and experience. Mm -hmm. And another question we've had here is, um, would you carry out a patch test when a client is pregnant, even if they're a regular customer? So I suppose every single time. Uh -huh. I think if they were regular, regular, so you know, you've waxed them through there's no need really to, to patch them, but you see what I said at the beginning that I will start a bit slower. So it's almost like I'm patch testing them anyway, mm. but um, you know, you have to be careful when you get in this, uh, I don't want to say random calls, but you do get those clients that call you and they like a few days before labor and they've never seen you and they really want wax. You, you might put yourself at risk by waxing them because you don't know the skin, you don't know, uh, you know, how well they're even reacting for wax. Big part of the, the stuff that I said today is the communication. You don't want to scare a pregnant lady. Because if you do scare her and she feels pain that was unexpected uh, and you didn't warn her, she might just simply wanted to leave the, the salon and, and you're going to be left out with this horrible feeling, you know. <laughs> uh, so patch tests are something that the industry always recommends and I would say it's a good practice. You can always ask the client to pop in between the clients and, and, and do the consultation guys. You know, I have a separate pregnancy consultation because that's the key to your success. Absolutely, thank you. And another question we've just had pop up is, can pregnant women take pain relief for intimate waxing? Okay, so good question as well. Um, I would say like this, I don't really believe in painkillers for waxing, okay? And i tell you why. I did the video about this because I will prefer, okay, what it does, it actually helps with inflammation, but not with pain. It is proven that if you take the painkillers beforehand, the inflammation of the skin will be less. But it isn't proven that it's, you know, the, the pain is gonna be less. So I don't think it is helpful in any way. And I don't think pregnant ladies should be taking any extra pills, you know, just for the waxing, right? We, we want it to be like the most natural as possible. So um, it's important that the pregnant ladies do wax regularly. They don't, they're not overdue. And this is your job. It's not your client's job. It's your job when they come first time that they are coming regularly. So then you don't have to stress about the skin reaction. Great. Thank you for that. That makes complete sense. And someone else has also asked, where is your training held and what's the cost, please? So a bit, little bit about, a bit more about you. Now. Okay. <laughs> so um, I've launched a waxing specialist academy, which I'm very proud of. And we will be training everyone in waxing uh, and pregnancy waxing as well. So the pregnancy wax intimate formula is a one-to-one -one masterclass. And you know, now with the COVID, uh, I can't really teach you yet, but it's a masterclass, a one day full training with me. So 
no other students, just me uh, with you in uh, our salon, in our academy. Uh, and then the next day we will book within a week or two, whenever you feel ready for uh, an exam for uh, theory and the practical. And this is a course that is fully accredited by ABT. This is the first uh, course actually, I think in UK that is a pregnancy accredited course. So I would really invite you to have a look at it. And um, if you wanted to speak to me more about it, feel free to contact me after the, the uh, live. And uh, did you ask about the price? Yes, I'm gonna yes. So at the moment, the price is 449 pounds for the one-to-one -one training. But I can tell you that to this morning, um, I did have some talks about having this theory online, okay? So if it gets accredited, this course will be for you to do online. It, was, it will be very, very helpful. And then you can just book with you one-to-one. -one. Excellent. That actually relates to another question that's just uh, popped up, which is, do you have a YouTube channel or a website where you do more videos? You are so knowledgeable and I love the way you explain things. So that's a nice little bit of feedback. <laughs> <laughs> warming my heart guys yes i do have i'm quite active on social media so i have few facebook uh, pages uh, i've got one about pregnancy so marta zaczkowska uh, pregnancy waxing i have a private group for professionals so if you waxing a professional uh, the group is there for you um, waxing specialist support group for professionals i do have a youtube channel okay you can see i did a waxing challenge in november where i wax every day different body part it was a crazy stupid idea but i did it <laughs> yeah, it was live and it, we couldn't find the models you, you, if you want to laugh if you have a glass of wine and you want to have a laugh on weekends then you can see me on the youtube marta zaczkowska <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Um, I think just a couple more last questions. We've had one in Facebook, which was um, when you are doing pregnancy waxing, would you need the okay from the client's midwife prior to a wax? No, the, at the moment there are any regulations like that because you see, um, we don't need really, if everything is okay, you know, as a beauty therapist, you don't really need referrals from doctors. You only will need if there's any concerns and where there are concerns, it's best just to kind of wait until everything is fine, right? What I said to you at the beginning. Midwives actually, we have few midwives that are our clients and so I have them on the spot. Whenever I have a case or whenever I wanted to speak about it, um, I can. Um, and you, you know what's interesting in our industry recently uh, that midwives started to recommend pregnancy wax because it's so helpful for them. <laughs> this poor woman had to like, you know, shave it to clients and deal with people's embarrassments. And, yeah. and actually some of the midwives now tell the clients, listen, it's okay. It's fine. You can have it done. But again, you, it's somebody who is re like, you know, trained, professional, insured, and they know what you're doing and they know when to say no. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to add it one more thing. Uh, one of the occasions why you completely wouldn't wax clients when they're pregnant is if they wanted a Hollywood and in the labia area they had a popping vein. Okay, This happens with all the ladies. It can happen to anyone and I've had many cases. Absolutely you cannot wax. You know, I know various veins and veins in Germany are contraindications to the treatment that's something that is a no-no yeah great that's really useful to know thank you and um, one last question that's just popped up is do you use aftercare lotion for sensitive skin and i suppose does that does that differ with pregnancy okay, so you see with me it's very easy because because i'm with lycon and we have products like soothing cream which is already for sensitive skin and generally lycon wax it is for sensitive skin so that's why you are very safe in terms of the products what i do with my clients i ask them what do they prefer oil or cream so you have two options right uh, and you can ask them uh, the ingredients are very safe we, we don't have anything there that could be uh, not good for pregnant women so the aftercare is the the range that Lycon normally gives us and it's perfectly fine they're not really strong in smell as well so you know with pregnant uh, pregnant ladies being sensitive to smells completely fine excellent you know. Great, well, I think that's probably all the questions we have time for, but that's, uh, yeah, we've got through loads, I think. So thank you so much, Marta. We've had lots of comments as well saying this has been really um, interesting and, uh, yeah, you're great to watch, very knowledgeable. So yeah. thank you for, yeah. Thank you so much for having me. And if anyone wants to get in touch and you're passionate about waxing as I am, okay, come on board and, and I can help you out. Um, 
with your with the pregnancy service or with your waxing business thank you excellent well thank you very much marta and um, and if anyone watching if you want to have a look at the other webinars we've got coming up we've got uh, another one this week and then pack schedule for next week as well so have a little look over on professionalbeauty.co.uk forward slash webinars um, and we'll see you soon but for now thanks very much marta and thanks everyone for joining us bye bye, bye, bye. guys have a good day